This is Getting Started with GeoGebra Geometry by Professor Arlo Kane for the Foundations of Geometry course at Cal Poly Pomona in spring of 2018. Alright, so this is GeoGebra Geometry. On the right, there is a copy of the Euclidean plane for you to play in. This is called the Graphics View. On the left, there are a variety of tools that you can use to play with geometry in the Euclidean plane. For example, you can click on the point tool. It brings up a little uh, description of that tool for your reference. If you click on a point in the Euclidean plane and click on another point, each time you do so, it'll create a point in these locations. Then two points, two distinct points we know determine a unique line. So if we click on the line tool, we should be able to select the first point, select the second point, and see that a line is uniquely determined. And by using the move tool, you can change uh, the input points and therefore change the line that they determine. If you ever made a mistake and wanted to undo what you just did, there's an undo option up here. that allows us to undo the moves that I just made. And you can go back as far as you need to go, even undoing the line, undoing the creation of the point, undoing the creation of the point again. At some point it'll gray out because you can't go forward, uh, backwards any more steps, but you could go forward in that list and recreate what you did to a certain step. Another thing to notice is over here at the top <laughs> there is a symbol for geometry tools and then a symbol for the steps. And here you can see the things we've created, the point A, a point B, and the line uh, between A and B, which happens to have been named by GeoGebra F. You can deselect uh, a thing while keeping it computed there and then bring it back. You can also change the names quite easily by clicking in the input area and changing the letter. When you hit enter, you'll see that it's updated in the graphics view the label. And the other thing to notice is that when we made those changes, it actually sees the point as an ordered pair of real numbers because GeoGebra is using uh, R2 as a model of Euclidean geometry and it's calculating things in the background using algebra. So for example you could also ask it to plot the locus of solutions to y equals x squared. You see the standard parabola and that's drawn with respect to uh, a coordinate system that's in the background. You can go back to the geometry tools, use the move tool to move the view of that configuration to show what you'd like. And if you ever wanted to make a picture of what you were looking at, you could put in the um, grid lines if you'd like. You can also show no grid uh, as it was when we first started. You can turn off the axes. And if you wanted to make a picture of this to submit for a homework assignment, you can go to this menu in the corner, the main menu bring up these options and you can download the image of what you're looking at in one of these file types for example as a ping file. It will give you an option for naming that uh, file and you can export it and it will appear in your um, main document so it will well, appear where you uh, last we're working. So here I was working in a different course, but it'll give me an opportunity to save it in a location for reference later. Also in the geometry tools, only the basic ones are shown initially by clicking more. You can see that there's actually quite a few tools that are available, and many of these tools implement some of the basic constructions of geometry, such as uh, the line perpendicular to a given one through a given point. For example, if we click on a point here and then use that tool, we can select the point, select this line, and it will construct the unique perpendicular through that point to the given line. We'll explore some of those later in our course. In the real Euclidean plane, Points are interpreted as ordered pairs of real numbers, and lines are 
interpreted as sets of points which are solutions to linear equations. The linear equations come in two types. We call equations of the form x equals a, we say they uh, describe vertical lines, and equations of the form y equals mx plus b describe non-vertical lines. To verify the second axiom of incidence that for every line there exist at least two distinct points incident with that line, we would have to provide examples of a pair of points on the line given, and that because the line depends on a parameter a, the pairs of points should also depend on that parameter. This is how you show that for all lines of that type there exists two points which are distinct. So for example on the vertical line x equals a, we could consider the points a comma 0 and a comma 1, and for the non-vertical lines of the form y equals mx plus b, we can consider the points 0 comma b and 1 comma m plus b. Let's check that this works using GeoGebra. So here in GeoGebra, let's go over to the steps menu. Let's create a parameter A, which will be controlled by a slider, say ranging from minus 5 to 5. A parameter M, which will be controlled by a slider ranging from minus 5 to 5 and a parameter b, which will be controlled by a slider ranging from minus 5 to 5. Okay. And then let's ask GeoGebra to show us <coughs> the line x equals a. Now if we go back to the geometry tools, click on move, you can see that if we change a, the line changes. And of course, this is describing the equation of a vertical line. Let's go back to our steps tool and let's create the points a comma 0 and a comma 1. Indeed those two points are on the line of this type and no matter which line of this type we generate we get two distinct points on the line. Now we'll go ahead and hide the parameter a for vertical lines, and we'll go ahead and hide the vertical line and the two points we created. Let's now consider the non-vertical case. So if we plot y equals mx plus b, we see a non-vertical line, and as we change the parameter b, the line changes, and as we change the parameter m, the line changes. And we can recover all non-vertical lines in this case. So let's go ahead and check that the points are located on these lines. So our points are going to be 0 comma b and 1 comma m plus b. Indeed we see two distinct points on the line and this is true no matter which values we give to the parameters we always create two distinct points on these lines. So we can see that our verification of the axiom two of incidence, which was provided by algebra, is indeed playing out correctly because GeoGebra allows us to visualize that algebra and connect it back to what we think of in geometry. Now let's illustrate our verification of incidence axiom 1. So the axiom says that for every point P and every point Q not equal to P, there exists a unique line incident with P and Q. In our interpretation of the Euclidean plane, we did algebra to show that if P and Q, which are ordered pairs of real numbers, have the same first coordinate, a number A, then they lie on the unique line with equation x equals that number A. If the first coordinates are different, then they lie on a non-vertical line y of the form y equals mx plus b where m is given by the usual formula for the slope between two points, difference of the second coordinates minus difference uh, divided by difference of the first coordinates. And b is given by this expression, which involves a determinant of uh, the matrix built from the points p and q, and then divided by our difference uh, p1 minus q1. Let's illustrate that with GeoGebra. 
So here in GeoGebra, we've used the point tool to create points P and Q and change their uh, names to appropriately be P and Q. Over in the steps menu, we can uh, input commands which will calculate the uh, coordinate, the x coordinate of P, and store it in a, a variable P1. So if I go ahead and execute that command, you can see that it's computing a number and storing it in P1. Do the same thing to compute in P2, the same thing to compute Q1, and now we'll go ahead and input the same thing for Q2. So it's Q, and to make a subscript, you do the underscore command to get down in the subscript. The index then use the arrows to come back up again. Equals Y coordinate of the point Q and calculate, and now that's been computed. We can input the formulas for our parameters in terms of uh, the P's and Q's uh, to check that it works. So we have M is equal to P subscript 2 minus Q subscript 2 divided by P subscript 1 minus Q subscript 1 and <clears throat> B is equal to the determinant expression P subscript 1 times Q subscript 2 minus P subscript 2 times uh, Q subscript 1. Now just to make sure it's computing the product here, I should insert the times, which is the asterisk uh, command. Right. And then the slash for division creates a fraction bar and puts you down in the denominator, where we can do P subscript 1 minus Q subscript 1 to get our denominator. And now we should be able to check that if we plot the line Y equals MX plus B, it indeed goes through the two points. And if we use the move tool to move the points, it updates the calculations of all of those coordinates. And because our formulas have been proven true, it indeed computes the equation necessary to describe the line passing through those two points. So this is GeoGebra. It illustrates for you the Euclidean plane as a model of the axioms of geometry.